and welcome to Continuing Moments in African American History. I'm your host, Councilwoman LaShawn Burr-Danley. CDTV and the City of Douglasville is proud to bring you this special presentation in honor of Black History Month. Today we have the opportunity to acknowledge two men who were both very instrumental in local history. Both of these men were Douglasville natives and have played a major role in the early years of African American government in this community. These men we wish to honor and pay tribute to are the late Alton Caldwell and Harvey Jones. In our tribute today, we will be speaking with their families and learning more about these great men who made a large impact in our city, our neighborhood, and in our community. Thank you so very much while you join us. Hi, I'm Frederick Perry, Human Resources Director for the City of Douglasville, and we're proud to present this special feature on Black History Month on City TV. Hi, my name is LaShawn Burdanley, City Councilwoman for Ward 3. I am delighted to be in the presence of one of our City Council members that was um, here in our ward. We have his family today, Reverend Harvey Jones, and we're going to just pay a little tribute to him. And I'd like to, for them to introduce themselves. We'll start. My name is Mercedes Jones. My husband was Pastor Harvey Jones, of the ex city councilman. Okay. Okay. I'm Dewana Jefferson. I'm uh, the firstborn. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Connie Jones Perry, I'm daughter of Harvey Jones. Hi, I'm Joshua Perry, the grandson of Harvey Jones. And this evening we're going to actually have some continuing moments. This is continuing and we're going to recognize one of our city council. And I remember Reverend Jones when I was a little girl. Actually, I think I was a um, student at Stewart. Is that right, Connie, Duana? We all grew up together. Yeah. yeah. We're students yeah, at correct. Stewart Middle School. That and is correct. I remember walking in the parade and <laughs> voting for Reverend Jones when he ran for city council. Mrs. Jones, can you can you kind of just give us an idea of why is it that he was interested in becoming our city council representative? Well, he always loved to help the people and he always loved to help the kids and he wanted to make sure the north side was a clean side to live because we had a lots of drug activity and lots of drinking, a little everything going on that side and what nothing did about it and then he wanted something different on our side that you know we could have something new over there. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And what are some activities that Reverend Jones participated in to make sure that um, the, the north side was a clean safe area? Um, you know many people don't know this but um, even in the late 60s and 70s, Dad played baseball over there. Oh, wow. Jesse Davis Park, okay. before it was known as Jesse Davis Park. Mm -hmm. Mr. Davis had bought that area. So he always felt that he belonged there. Um, we lived there over 30 something years. Wow. So it was a very, you know, he lived there a long time and he was like, this is my community. I want it back. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't always that way. Right. It was a safe environment. And then um, in the late 80s, you know, when the drugs moved in um, and the, um, city wasn't doing anything about it. He's like, well, you know, I want my city back. Right. I want, you know, my children, my grandchildren, who are, and these other kids to have a safe, safe environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the only way he felt that he could fight for that was to be involved in city government. Right. Um, he went against what most people would have uh, done, being a minister, mm -hmm, a man of God, mm -hmm. um, and became involved in politics. Right, right. Because many felt that you can't uh, mix politics and uh, worshiping the Lord. But one thing I liked about Dad is he would always say, I'm a man of God first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. You know, then city councilman second. And if, if he felt that something wasn't right, regardless of uh, whether it was for uh, himself or the city, he would say, look, you know, I, I can't vote for it, you know. Wow. Well, uh, my conscience, you know, won't let me. Wouldn't let him do that. And he said, you know, you know, I have to answer to God before I have to answer to anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you're still actually living um, in the in the ward, is that right? Yes, I'm Did still living Did you say 36 ward. years? 30 Since 1973. Wow. Yes. And prior to that, we mm -hmm. actually lived off of Maxwell Street. Okay, before. so you've yeah. actually been in the ward for a long so time. Over the past 40 years. Okay, yes. all right. Yeah. Because I think. Yes. So were first. were they actually on council at the same time? No. No, they okay. weren't on the same time, but you know, Dad and Alton played baseball together. Oh, yeah. did they play against <laughs> each other? No, they no. actually played for the <laughs> same team. Same same team. team. Okay. Um, many people don't know this, but you know, the city of Douglasville 
had a um, semi-pro black baseball team. Oh, really? And so Dad and Alton and quite a few, you know, of them uh, were on it. it is, we even have a picture of, of all of them and Mr. Jesse Davis, who actually oh. owned, the, owned the park at that mm -hmm. time because he bought the park. Mr. Davis did so um, people could have somewhere to play and mm -hmm. enjoy sports. Mm -hmm. So did you all have a lot of interaction with Mr. Davis? Oh, yes. 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 What time? Yeah. What time? Yes. That sounds yeah. very exciting. I mean, he was a man that, um, you know, even though I was young when he died, he loved to, t to make sure that people had a good time. Mm. They stayed active. Baseball was his heart. Oh, okay. And, you know, I, I remember until the day he died, Dad took us all to the hospital. Oh. When they actually said he wasn't going to make it. And I remember us going up to the hospital, mm -hmm. you wow. know, seeing him. Yeah, That's how, my dad, how important my dad you know, felt about uh, Mr. Mr. Davis. Davis. He was like a second father to him. Wow, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You were going to say something? No, I was just going to say, in, in regards to the activities that you were speaking of, um, one of the many activities that I used to remember is that on Saturdays, Daddy used to have something right towards school time where he used to pass out book bags and whatever for the kids at the mm -hmm. community down at, at, I guess what we call Jesse Davis Park, right. um, at the community where Charles um, uh, what is it? Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Thomas. Right. And he used to do that every year to make sure that the kids had something, you know, to take to school. Mm -hmm. And and he had certain um, uh, companies and businesses that would donate those items for the children because there were parents that in that area that was not able to afford that. And of course, when a child goes to school, no child wants to go to school without supplies. So Data was right. able to implement that and get with some of the businesses and some of the organizations in the area you know, to make sure, um, you know, that they had those activity. Plus, um, one thing I know he got involved is making sure that they had gotten a, a health center on that side of oh, town. Okay. Dad was very, mm -hmm. very adamant about doing that, you know, having to cross over, I guess, what we call the railroad track to get to that side. He wanted something on our side, and so he was able to maybe talk, um, pretty much sort of kind of, you know, gotten with some people and see mm -hmm. what can you do for us. Right. Yeah, he actually negotiated, I think, now it's a teen health center. Yeah. So you mean the um, health center on Strickland Street? Yes. That is so correct. Kevin Jones was actually involved with yes. making yes. that happen? Yes, oh, he was. Wow. And it's yeah. still here. It's still, still here. Right. Even with the Anna Hawthorne Center. Right. 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 That was a right. few setbacks at the beginning, but finally he was able to push it through and, yeah. and able to get yeah. one. Okay, he was a mover and a shaker. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. He, he, fought, he fought hard because he felt that, you know, you're not going to forget about the north side. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. you're not going to forget about it because, you know, for so many years, there wasn't a lot over there. Right. And although Reverend Jones um, is not with us anymore physically, mm -hmm. but he right. definitely is with us yeah, in our spirit. spirit. Yes. What is it that you see now you can carry on um, that your father your father did, and you have your wonderful son, his grandson, <laughs> left a legacy here? Well, one thing my father told me, and um, I never understood it until I had my own kids. He said, when it comes time for you to have, you know, have your children, you need to be, th be there with them when they're playing sports. And I never you know, really understood that because mm -hmm. I could uh, remember looking in the stands. My parents were always there. And he said, there's nothing like knowing that you've got your parents are there cheering you on. Right. And he made me make a promise to him um, the night before he died. And, and I didn't put the two and two together. He said, regardless of whatever happens, you make sure you're, you're at your children's uh, events. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, Dad, what do you mean? He said, how did it feel to you when you looked up and saw, you know, that we were there? Oh, and I nice. said, Daddy, I said, it was a great feeling exactly. to right. know that, you know, your dad, right. you know, your dad or your mom was there right. cheer, right. cheering you on. Right. And what, you know, I do now, I am involved, you know, in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I did Booster Club for four years at Lithia oh, Springs okay. High School for football. Um, and any time mm -hmm. that my children play any sports, I try to help them in any kind of way by being a team mom. Mm -hmm. A project that I'm working on, which hasn't been officially announced, is... Um, it's announced now. <laughs> <laughs> the company that I'm working for um, um. is actually going to take a park here in Douglas County where a lot of African-American children participate in, and we're going to re uh, help renovate it oh, um, wonderful. before spring. Okay, good. So um, we're actually, I'm looking forward, you know, to getting that done. But... Um, and it's for baseball fields. Oh, wow. And, you know, that's something my father truly believed that he wanted uh, was baseball. He said there was never enough African Americans involved in baseball. Mm. We would play the basketball. We would play the football. But he really wanted um, us to get more involved in baseball. So I'm taking wow. that on because I know how he Good for you. love baseball. Good right. for you. Do you remember a challenge that Councilman Jones had to face that was very difficult for him? Politics, period, was a challenge. Yeah. challenge. Right. It was yeah. a challenge because of the fact that at the time, you know, our, our place it's opening. It was getting ready to then open. Then a I black mean, the, mayor, Tim, that was, mm -hmm. and I think that was the first. 
I believe, am, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah he was yeah, the first. Yeah, first black. So that yes. was, you know, yeah. mayor the transitioning mm -hmm. of having a, you know, a black person mayor as Mayor Pro Tem, mm -hmm. you know, among, you know, it's, you know, it's, I think I mean, there was a little bit of controversy, controversy there. there. It was, you it was know. controversy, I think, and then, you know, it was moving and shaking, you know, at that time, the um, city of Douglas was beginning to, you know, grow rapidly. It changed, right. it changed a little there was a, there, was a lot, there was a lot going on, I mean, because of the fact they wanted to hold on to the old. Okay. And here was a new right here. Mm -hmm. getting ready to explode. Mm -hmm. It's hard to change. And it was hard, right. it was hard for people to accept change. Mm -hmm. change. So how did Reverend Jones balance? How did he balance that? What did he feel? Well, you know, it's his persona, you know, his way that he treated. He treated people the way that he wanted to be treated. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Um, you know, you can sit and eat with your enemies and still be, you know, um, able to negotiate work with them. Right. And somehow or <laughs> another, he was able to shine. And, you know, regardless who your enemies are, you know, they're going to, I mean, eventually, okay. Right. But some or another, they were able to work out. They still liked Dad. I mean, though there were differences, but when it come down to it, you know, Dad was able to work with both sides, whether or not they all agreed on the same thing. They all was able to come to a middle. They respected him. And respected That's him, good. and yeah. that was the main thing. Yeah. And like I always said, you know, when you work with someone, you know, you say, well, I don't, you know, expect you to like me. Or, but we have to work together. To get the job. However, we have to, yeah, we have to respect each other in order to right. work together and get the job. Agree to disagree. And and we, exactly. Right. And Daddy was the type of person. He said, "Kill him with kindness." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he said, "You go into the, you know, to the line of dens." He said, "But you go, you know, you go in strong, believing because God's going to make a way out of it." And he did that several times. Oh, I mean, he, because of his beliefs. Right. right. He didn't always look at things the same way people mm -hmm. did. He's like, you know, God's going to work this out. Right. right. And he always treated just like the Bible. Like he said, this is not in the Bible, leave it alone. It's a God to work it That's out. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you were definitely a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> you were definitely a trooper. <laughs> Reverend Jones served no. for two terms. Mm -hmm. And then I understand he became very ill. Yes. And you were did. right there. Right there. Right, right there. Did right. not leave him. Mm -hmm. Mom, 24 7, you know. Right. That's one thing, you know. Um, that was 48 years. 48 years? And I told, I told, you know, I told my, you know, I even told Dad, you know, um, before he died, I was like, if, if I could just have half of what him and my mom shared. Oh, that is so sweet. Half of what they shared because one thing I learned about my dad, he had his flaws. Right. He wasn't afraid to admit to anything. Mm -hmm. Right. That, you know, I'm not a perfect man. I've messed up. Mm -hmm. He said, but I know how to pull myself up. Oh, wow. And he did. He did. Yeah, he did. And, and I, that's one thing I, I loved about him. He said, he said, you know, people can say whatever they want to say to me, say about me. Yeah, I'll admit it's true. He said, but I know, you know, when it's time for me to go, I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. You know, he, right. said, he said, I've done my dirt. That's a great right. honor. You know? yeah. I remember. Right. Said, I remember he was saying that, uh, you know, if I can't take it, put him in a nursing home. I said, no matter what, I never put you in a nursing home. Oh, wow. I just, with him day and night. We were there. And day then and one, night. Night. one day 24 he told me, Sue, he said, you can handle a thing now. He says, it's time for me to go home with God. He always talking about going home with God. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember some stories, Joseph, that your papa, is that what you call him, papa? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Do you remember? Yeah. Tell him about yeah. the basketball when he went to you. I want the basketball games. He always says, you come to, the, to my basketball game to cheer me on. Oh, right. that nice. No, How did it make you feel? Good. Made you feel good. Right. So what grade are you in now? Seven. Seventh grade. Can That's you play? Right. Can you play basketball? No, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and he picked you up from school every day. Oh, yes, your grandfather picked you up every mm -hmm. day? Yes, ma'am. Yes, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is really neat. Yeah. That's neat. He was a great man. Oh, he was. Yeah. He, was. Man. he um, finally, uh, with Daddy being so busy, I used to call him sometimes. And I said, Daddy, can you come? I'm speaking at the PTA. I was PTA president for two years for my daughter's school in Cobb County. Okay. And that was the inspiration of the Daddy being a leader. I remember as we were growing up, I was in the band, Connie was in Chile, so it's like Daddy was taking one, Mom was, Mom picking, was up. picking at the other, so we sort of <laughs> kind of passed each other along the way. But his inspiration and involvement with people also inspired me and my sister to be involved with our children as well and with our community. Um, I was PTA president of Cobb County School for two years, vice mm -hmm. president. I was some part of my daughter's um, 
um, ballet. She's with the Atlanta Ballet. Oh, wow. Um, so she's doing really good. Uh, but my dad also had promised me, he kept saying with his schedule, he said, I'm coming to one of her recitals. So the year before he died, he made it to his yeah, recital. Yeah. And wow. it was just a joy. Was that a surprise? It was yes. a surprise. Yes. Because he'd been promising me that he's going to come. But, oh. was, but with his or, his activities with church and, of course, the council, we just could never seem to click. So finally, right. that was his year. And I'm so glad he was able to make it before he died because that was so... Um, my daughter just loved knowing that her papa was, was in the there. audience, yeah. that's awesome. and it was very nice just to sit back and and I know when they were all cheering, there's that's my granddaughter, that's my granddaughter, <laughs> that's right there. That's I'm not ashamed. Daddy said that. I'm not ashamed, but you know, but it, but that's Daddy has been really inspiration in our life, not only my life but my children's life uh, right now. Um, my son is currently, I have a 23-year-old son who is currently in internship with the Cobb County Internal Affair. Oh, wow. So he's on internship, so he'll be graduating this fall. But Dad has been a huge inspiration to him as well. It's mm -hmm. like to, you know, to stay on the right road, um, you know, believe in that education, put your head on, you know, keep your head straight. And, you know, and, That's awesome. and Daddy's been there. Matter of fact, I remember when LaSalle was little, Dad used to come home every Every time for lunch, I have lunch with little Sam. Yeah. Well, little Sam, but it's big Sam now. But it's just he still be little Sam. He's still little Sam. <laughs> but, um, but you know, he's just been a huge inspiration right. to my to my That's son up to the day that he died. You know, my father always you know stressed education, and he said it was never you know never too late mm -hmm. um, to go back and get your education. And you know, I stress to my kids how much education is important because my father you know felt that you know growing up in the times that he did, right. you know, education was limited, mm -hmm. and he used to always tell us even as kids. Um, the, you know, education is something nobody can take. What you learn, they can't take away. That's from right. It. That's right. And um, you know, I'm striving. I've got I've got a son in college, and I'm striving. I'm working along really hard trying to get you know my PhD. Right. But I did that because you know my father encouraged us. You know, go as far as you can go. Right. Now you never stop learning. That's what he always said. Mm -hmm. He said, always say he's got his uh, BA degree. I was like, huh? He said, I got my born again, <laughs> <laughs> born again degree. And the, um, you know, one thing I can say about my father, even though he didn't graduate from college, that was a well-educated man. Right. I it mean, about awesome. life, exactly. about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, whatever. That's what I miss about him. Just being able to pick up the phone and say, "Daddy, I got a problem." Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there were people, you know, that from city council would just call. And you know, talk to him and say, you know, and people that knew him on the streets, well, how would you handle this? How would you, you know, do this? Mm -hmm. Or even if they were, had to go before the city council to get something approved. Right. Um, and before, you know, it went, they were like, well, can you give us some advice? He was always there. Exactly. Yeah, he was always there. Right. And that's, and that's what I appreciate. It didn't matter that day they were family or not. Right. Right. And <laughs> I just want to say one last word. You know, I haven't lived in Douglasville in 20 years, but when I come through here, I see the different touches that my dad had oh. put on the community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very touching to be able to drive through and say, my dad has something to do with this, my dad has something to do with that. I mean, a lot has changed in Douglasville in 20 right. years. Mm -hmm. right. And I've seen a lot that dad has done that, you know, um, that I didn't know he had done. I still have people from time to time when I'm coming through here, you know, your dad was this, your dad was that. Yeah, I remember your dad. I, even there are some people right. where my husband works remembers my dad. Wow. And when the day that he had died, um, they had come up to him and said, man, we know, we know your we know your father-in-law. We we talked with him. We dealt with him, and you know he just touched a lot of people. Out, not only on War Three, but people that were like the, um, Highway Five, right. um, Winston, Villa Rec. I mean, right. they the knew community. Dad. I mean, mm -hmm. it it was a diverse. I mean, whether you're black, white, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Asian, Hispanic, everyone knew my dad. That's and awesome. but as I said, as I drive through Douglasville and drive on War Three. Just to see the changes, I've seen some remarkable things that my dad has done, and, and things that I didn't, I wasn't aware of. But because his love for War Three and for the community and for the city of Douglasville, and I just right. wanted to, you know, Aww. add that. That but, is awesome. But overall, he, he is greatly missed. Yeah. Yeah. Even to this day, it'll be two years, years yeah. next. Yeah. Yeah. He is greatly yeah. missed. I've never mm -hmm. seen him have a bad yeah. day. Yeah. Oh, I've never had a bad day. That's what I was say. Even when he was in pain and he could barely move, you know, wow. those like yeah. those um. I guess uh, up until the week before he died, you know, Daddy felt really bad. But that week before he died, it's like he got all his strength back. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he had his bad days, but he would never let you know. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, we yeah. said God is able. That was wow. his. God is able. And the community mm -hmm. is always on his mind. Mm -hmm. Always, yeah. like, he's left a legacy. Yes, he he and I just want to say thank you so mm -hmm. very much for your time, and it's an honor to give this tribute yes. to our former city council, Reverend Pastor Harvey Jones. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.
Hi, I'm Mayor Mickey Thompson. The City of Douglasville and City TV is very proud to present this special feature on Black History Month. Good evening, I'm LaShawn Burdanley, City Councilwoman for Ward 3. It is an honor for me to be here, I'm continuing moments with our Black History Month with Judge Caldwell and her two lovely daughters, Jennifer and Jessica. And we are here to do a tribute to one of our City Council representatives, Mr. Alton Caldwell, who is no longer with us physically, but he is here with us in the spirit. And we are here just to talk about some moments when he was city council and how he made a very great impact in our community. Judge Caldwell, can you please tell me why is it that Alton um, decided to run for city council? Well, at the beginning he was a little bit hesitant about doing it because he hadn't really been in the public light much at all. But, but the community, um, many of the residents in the community kind of encouraged him to get involved and he was um, involved because he, he knew what was going on in the community and he knew some of the things that needed to be done and so uh, with a little encouraging mm -hmm. and perhaps even threatening <laughs> I, I kind of heavily encouraged twisted him his arm. to yeah, <laughs> twist his arm to participate and, right. and it wasn't hard because he 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 loves to talk anyway and um, he's a negotiator mm. and he's a charmer so he was really good at it okay and Jessica and Jennifer do you remember what do you remember about your father being involved in the community I remember um, all the meetings I remember him always going, I think it was on Monday nights he had the meetings. Uh, I remember having to go to functions. I remember uh, when we went to Jekyll Island because he was, <laughs> you know, going for conferences and what. I, that's what I remember the most. And I remember him always wanting to, to be involved. And I remember people knowing him because of what he was doing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and being recognized in the community because of what he was doing. That I remember that very vividly. Right. And did you have a comment? Well, I was very young, so I don't really remember a whole lot. I just remember him being gone a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, again, the, the rec recognition, I remember that. But as far as much else, I don't recall mm -hmm. too much. Well, you know, I was, I was young when your father was city council. And um, I know he was an advocate. I know that he, just from listening to some of the older um, grassroots people that are in our community. I remember them telling me that um, Brother Alton was very involved with trying to get the fire station here on, on this side, Ward 3. There was not a fire station and now there is. Is there anything else that, that he um, worked on in this ward that is still helping our community at this moment? Yes, he was very instrumental in getting the um, um, Jesse Davis Park mm -hmm going and uh, what is now called I believe the Douglasville Village Oh, okay. and um, uh, Shelter in Arms mm. um, those are some of the main things and I think the um, community development project when okay. they were rehabbing the houses and that kind right. of thing um, he was very instrumental in those particular projects and he, he, he just loved that kind of work helping right. other people right. and a lot of the citizens senior citizens in the community whose homes were dilapidated and um, he was instrumental in getting some of the um, applications and mm -hmm. things that they needed in order to get their homes rehabbed. Right. You know, I remember that. My grandmother, um, Tessie Wiggles and Annie Mae Polk mm -hmm. actually were yeah. a part of that and um, they w received new homes, so that's really good. So tell me about your dad, um, some fun things. I think I heard that he loved to play baseball. Yeah. <laughs> he loved to play baseball. That sounded a little serious, Jessica. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. think love would be an understatement. Understatement. My father was the biggest Braves, Hawks, and Falcons fan ever to walk right. the face yeah. of the wow. earth. <laughs> and it didn't matter if they were losing That's right. or if they were winning. Mm -hmm. He was all, he would watch every game. He would talk about the game. He would re go back and, and rehash the game. <laughs> uh, I mean, he just really loved sports. He That's loved good. to play. And mm -hmm. he always talked about 
I could have been pro. I could have did <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah. He would all, and then we'd have to hear all the stories about oh, the state uh -huh. championships and, <laughs> and all of that. And, and I think my favorite thing was just being with him, watching those things. Wow. And going to the games with him. We used to go see the Braves play with my my. Uh, my uncle played. Oh, okay. So um, he, he really got joy out of, out wow, of that. Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I had an opportunity to hear your father sing. Mm -hmm. And he used to mm -hmm. sing with the group, but I don't remember the name. Faith, Hope, and Charity. Are they, mm -hmm. Do they still and sing now? On occasion, okay. I think they do. Okay, mm -hmm. I think I remember your father singing at St. James. Yeah. And then there was one one gentleman who would sing soprano. I think your dad was a leader. Is that right? Was he, he was a lead one singer, one of the lead singers? Of and I know Mr. Clyde Springer was um, James Minor. Okay, James Minor, James yeah. Minor playing. Yeah, yeah. so your your father was very, very um, versatile, mm -hmm. very flexible. It sounds like he was a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. And um, Judge Caldwell, how long were you all married? Oh, about 100 years. No. <laughs> <laughs> But we were married 40 years. Oh, wow. wow. We were married 40 years, and they were good, good. years. That's I awesome. really, I mean, when I, the first year after we were married, I remember telling my mother that, you know, people would always come in and ask you, well, you know, how's it going? How's marriage? You know, and I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, if if I had if it was this good, if I had known it was this good, I would have married him one year earlier. Oh, that's, that's what so I sweet. would always tell him. <laughs> but then down through the years, but no, it was really good, that's and we awesome. celebrated our 40th uh, wedding anniversary in August of this year. Wow, mm -hmm. yeah, that's so. awesome, and you don't really hear you don't hear that much now. No, 40 you years, don't. that's mm -hmm. a long time. And how did, how has that impacted um, you, ladies, that your parents were married for such a long time? No, no, me personally, I don't know that's. What I want, you know, when I get married, I would like to have that longevity and that, mm -hmm. you know, married till you die kind of relationship, you know, where you don't just give up so easily like right. a lot of people do nowadays. Right, you know, right. It's very inspiring. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's, that's really nice to hear. And you know what's so wonderful is that you've allowed us to come into your home. And, and thank you for allowing us to do that and come into your home. And not only has um, Alton, Brother Alton or Councilman Alton, left a, um, you all, but he's also left a legacy. He has three grandchildren that are with us. So, now Lace, how old are you? Thirteen. Thirteen. And nine. Nine. And how old are you, Lace? He's crunch. Are you crunch? Are they smushing you? <laughs> okay. How old are you? Five. Five. So what is it that you remember about your grandfather you'd like to share with us? Well, I remember never seen him Speak down, loud. really. I remember that he was, usually when I saw him, he was always happy, and you know, he would encourage me to do the same thing. Whenever I looked like I was mad about something, he would talk to me about it. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's cool. And Alex, what do you remember? Uh -huh. The hug that your grandfather gave you? What is that name he used to call you all the time? Uh -huh. what Squirt. He, <laughs> <laughs> he called you Squirt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Langston, would you like to say something about your grandfather? He hurts me. What would you like to say? <laughs> well, he loved me a lot. Aww. I love him. He loves me. That's I don't want him to die. Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> That's so sweet. Where did you say he was? Oh, yeah. that is so sweet. Well, I tell you, it is an honor, again, ladies and gentlemen, to be here. And we thank you so much for being a part of these continuing moments at our City TV with um, our Black History. And we look forward, all of you continuing to be involved as we remember our very own City Councilman Alton Caldwell. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for joining us for this special presentation for Black History Month. We are very delighted to have interviewed Mrs. Mercedes Jones, her daughters and her grandson, as well as Judge Barbara Caldwell, her two daughters and her grandchildren. We hope that you have enjoyed this program and have a wonderful year.